Hey guys, today I'm going to recap the Illigoo Neptune 3 Max video that you saw a couple weeks ago on the channel. We're going to take a little bit deeper dive and I'm going to give you my full honest opinion. Now that I've used these machines for over a month, and by use them I mean use them, we're going to take a look at that. See you guys inside. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome to today's video. Today, as I said, we are taking a look at the Creality Sonic Pad. Now, I did an initial unboxing of this device a couple weeks ago, or actually it was a couple months ago, and the device is sleek. It's pretty. It will work with just about any printer that can run Clipper. So it's not just really limited to Creality, but it is a lot harder from some of the stuff I was reading to get this to work with non-Creality printers, because the Creality product works for Creality. Now, I do have one of these up in my shop, and it does work after some trial and error and figuring out how to redo the firmware um, that it required for my printer, making sure I had the right printer to match the right firmware. Uh, it's now working on one of my Ender 3 S1 Pros. Well, my only S1 Pro. And uh, I've been very impressed with it. It has a very nice web interface. It's very clean, and it lets me work on the printer in a in a similar way that I would with the Beagle Cam or Octoprint. But with that, it kind of, there's pros and cons to this device that I definitely want to go over. And we're going to talk about those here in just one second. But first, if you're new here, make sure you hit that subscribe button. If you like what you see in this video today and you find it very helpful, hit that thumbs up button, help us out. And also, if you're thinking about or have questions about this device and I can try to help to answer, leave a comment down below. So. Let's talk about this device in a little bit more detail. So, you have different devices like Beagle Cam, which is a device that you plug in. It has a built-in camera, Wi-Fi, and it connects to your phone. This one ups the notch a little bit over that. Now, granted, there's no camera in this. You have to buy a secondary camera and plug it into the USB port to have video, but you can still time-lapse with this device. But unlike its competitors, it has a very nice big LCD screen that really kind of helps let you see the control. And with Clipper, it does. It, I have noticed a speed up in production um, using the Clipper software connected to my Ender 3 S1 Pro. Now, here we come to the first con. So Pro One, beautiful, great LCD, Wi-Fi connectable, USB connects to the printer. You know, nice stuff. Con number one price. I've seen these ranging out on Amazon from $139 to $160. Pretty good price swing, pretty expensive little device. Now, back in the day, before COVID, Raspberry Pis, you could get a Raspberry Pi for about $100 bucks and put it on there. And then you've got these new competitors like BeagleCam. A BeagleCam V2 will run you about $100. Now, why is the Beagle Cam V2? Why do I bring that up, Mike? Because the Beagle Cam V2 comes with a camera and everything built in. You're paying $150 for this device, and then you've got to buy a webcam on top, which most of the webcams that I get are $50 or higher, because I like the Logitech higher-end webcams when I'm doing stuff uh, for my end. Now, you could get away with a cheaper webcam as long as it will recognize the webcam. So keep that in mind as you're going through. Not only do you need to buy the pad, you need to buy the webcam to be able to get your video and control that you want over the device. Um, so that's my first con is price. Price. This is the LCD is fantastic, and what, that's kind of what you're paying for is that LCD because uh, this is a nice big LCD, easy to read. You guys will see some video of it here shortly to kind of help along that process as well because I'll also want to show you the web interface. There's a lot of perks to the device, especially Clipper. Um, but the price point is my biggest downfall to this device. Uh, Beagle Cam V2 runs you about $100. The Beagle Cam runs you about $70. The Raspberry Pi used to be extremely competitive, um, but not so anymore. Um, Octoprint used, was a really great thing when you could get the Raspberry Pis, and the price point for the Raspberry Pis during COVID just jumped and made them kind of unattainable, in my opinion. Um, so there's a lot of, that's my real con to this is the price. The price point to me feels a third too high for its competitors. 
especially since I have to buy the additional webcam. Setup for this one was, like I said, it was a little bit more challenging, um, but Octoprint is pretty challenging. Um, BeagleCam kind of wins in that. It's, you plug it in, you connect it to your app, and you connect it to your Wi-Fi, boom, go plug it into your printer, set your settings, boom, you're ready to roll. Uh, BeagleCam's probably the fastest. Octoprint has a lot more scratch build that you have to do. So in actuality, other than the firmware, this guy kind of is in the middle of the two. Um, so it's got a really nice kind of added feature to it to that that works. But what I want to do now is kind of I talk pros and cons, goods and bads. There's goods. There's lots of goods here. The but the price point too concerns me because an Ender 3 S1 Pro is about 250 300 dollars, and I'm spending half that as much as I paid on the printer for a control device. That's a little alarming too. But let's hop over. Let's go. We're gonna go up to the shop. It's gonna be kind of noisy. I'm sorry about that, but it is an active print shop, and we're gonna take a look at this guy actively connected to a machine. All right, guys. So here we are at the Ender 3 S1 Pro. You can see it's all hooked up there. And there is the Creality Sonic Pad. And I do apologize about the glare. Not a lot I can do about it, but when you're looking at it, you got your heat, your temps, you can move the axes, you can control extrusion, fans, all that kind of stuff from right here. You can do some configuration with leveling. You can save the configuration, auto level, calibrate your Z. You can do that here, network settings, all that stuff easily from the home screen here. Then of course my favorite is the print. I'm gonna start a job. And there we go. So kind of the cool thing that's really nice about that is I can go into adjustments and I have a full range of controls of my Z offset, my temperatures, my fans, all right here at my fingertips, but also I can go look at configurations as well. Then we return back to our home screen. We're in our print, our temps, positions, all that fun stuff, remaining time, all that kind of fun stuff is just detailed for us right off in the front. You guys can see it's a really nice big LCD screen. We've got our chip reader and this is connected to my Wi-Fi so that I can take control of it. And you can see the Ender 3, she is getting in position to get started using my favorite Inland PLA. She's gonna heat up here. And the one thing about the Ender 3 S1 Pro and this device is the temps run real nice and real quick. The printer's usually ready for action really, really quickly. So you guys can see the bamboo down there but it works really, really well, um, but it does take up some space. I had looked at possibly making a mount to go on the front of the printer so it can actually sit out here, but I just haven't had time to really dig into that. But temps are displayed there, there, projects, adjustments. I know my Z offset is set correctly, so I don't need to do anything there, and I don't need to do any adjustments. I can also come here and pause if I need to do a filament change and stuff like that. One of the things over Octoprint that I am going to mention that I really do like about this is this does respect the filament sensor. My Octoprints don't respect my filament sensor and doesn't care about my filament sensor and ignores it when it's in, when it's in a failure state. This one, it'll pause it. This will move off to the side over here, reload, hit resume. Now there is a timeout, so it'll only stay in that state for about, I think, 90 minutes right now is what I have it set at. And then at 90 minutes, it'll cancel the print and it won't It'll, it won't go past and suck all this into there and make a mess. So that is one cool thing about this. So keep that in mind. But there you go. You can see it in action. It's already got my printer off to the start. And we're laying down our initial stripe for... Okay, guys, here's the web interface, like I said. Now, this is just my internal one. This guy has no access outside of the internet. But we can see my temps are running. We can see what print I'm doing. I can start initiate prints from here as long as the printer is empty. I can do all kinds of work just from right here. I can look at my macros, I can cancel the print, I can look at my fan speeds, printer limits, but also I can look at the console, what commands are going through the printer. I can look at what files I have sitting up on the device. I can look at the history of all my prints where I've canceled or status or succeeded. Time lapses. Uh, unfortunately, my camera is not working right now. Uh, but you can, you guys can see where I've done test prints and the time lapses work just fine. 
setting adjustments. Here's my leveling. Uh, bed meshing controls. You can see this stuff's kind of weird. I can look at configuration files. I can look at the system information, how clipper, load, all that kind of stuff, basically task manager. And I can start adjusting settings, all right here from the web interface. So very nice, clean web interface, definitely in comparison to some other products. Uh, for example, I'll show you Octoprint's interface in kind of a comparison, webcam, all that kind of stuff. And actually, I need to hit that. That way I get a job started. But hopefully this is kind of helpful to you guys seeing the web interface. Because uh, it is very nice, very clean, very well done. Um, you've got an emergency stop option and all those kind of goodies up here as well. So hopefully this kind of helps out. Let's jump back to our video. All right, guys. So you saw on the machine, we got a lot of stuff. We can adjust our Z our Z offset, all this kind of stuff within the device. Now, honestly, before I did the firmware, the S1 Pro, I could do that on the small control screen on the S1 Pro, but the Clipper software also kind of just gives that little bit of enhancement, that little bit of speed boost, and that little bit of extra control. So is the device worth purchasing? Yes, it is. Um, getting control over your printer, the Clipper feature to help enhance the Creality printer is actually really nice. Um, this one that you see in my hand is actually for my CRM4. Um, I'm getting ready to tackle that one, but I've just had a lot of jobs the CRM4 has been handling. Um, so I haven't had the downtime to do the work to my CRM4. Because setup, when I did it on the Ender 3S1 Pro and I didn't know what I was doing, it took about an hour uh, to, do, to go through the full setup after what you guys saw in that first video. Um, flashing the firmware to the printer and all that kind of stuff. So... Um, it's got its pros and cons, um, and you know there are other competitor, third-party competitors out there like Minitons, Beagle Cam, Octoprint, and I'm sure there's other competitors I haven't mentioned. Those are the ones that we've just worked with. We've done reviews on the channel and stuff that I utilize in my shop now. So I've got all three of these technically utilized in my shop at the moment, um, which means multiple web interfaces and all that kind of stuff. So definitely, it's something you should consider. But is it going? If you're having trouble with your printer, is this going to solve your problem? Probably not. So kind of keep that in mind. It's not a it's not an ultimate fix to your printer. This is a gives you more control over your printer and connects it to your network, so you can actually monitor your printer. Is what this device truly does. So hopefully you guys have found this video informative. If you do, hit that hit that subscribe button if you're new. If you like what you saw, hit that like button because that helps us out, helps us get us out there more and gets more people seeing this content. But also at the same time, it just helps us grow. And if you have any questions, definitely hit us in the comments down below. Thank you guys and we'll catch you in the next video.